I'm going fishing again, again. Going to a rock mark in Hollyhead. Now I wanted to fish this mark last night, but um, it's just too dangerous on your own. Don't matter who you are and how experienced you are, you shouldn't be fishing rock marks on your own at night, period. They can be slippy, you can fall, you can have a rogue wave. But anyway, that's the safety aspect done. Don't fish them on your own. Um, the weather's been really bad as well. The car was froze over this morning. There's snow all over the country. It's not got to get above minus all day. So while you're watching this, think of me freezing my off because it's going to be a cold one. It's going to be a cold one. This mark is about 35 minutes away from me now. I'm going to travel there. I've got a bit of a walk till I get to the rocks. Uh, and I know it's been producing rays, which I'm not going to lie. I'd love a ray. I've never caught a ray. I'd love one. I've never really targeted them before. Well, once, but I'd love one anyway. Um, but I know this mark fish is a lot better at night. I know at night it can be really productive. I'm fishing the two o'clock this afternoon, daytime tide. So I've got the odds against me anyway. Plus I don't normally catch much anyway. So yeah, um, so we're gonna get over there. Um, we're gonna be freezing. Free, well, I'm gonna be freezing. It's gonna be cold. It's gonna be very cold, but I'm gonna fish four hours up and probably an hour after. Um, and we'll just see what happens. So wish me luck. See you in a bit. Time for a road trip. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Welcome to Gamekeeper John's Fishing Adventures. Before I got to the spot that I wanted to fish, it was time to get off at this junction and check out Triada Bay. This is a spot on my radar and a place that I want to do some fishing at very soon. idea where I'm going you know I thought I'd been here before um, it actually turns out I've never actually ever been into Triada or Triada I don't even know how you say it looking for Triada Bay set a signpost down this way South Stack that's good fishing apparently as well isn't it I've got a lot of exploring to do I have I've got a lot of exploring right but I don't even know if I'm going the right way never been here in my life but i'm only coming to have a look watch me get lost now and miss the tide to fish the other place after <laughs> be about right anybody want a mott for 45 quid there you go go and get one i've had to pull over i've got to type in triada bay into my sat nav because i ain't got a clue where it is i've just seen little beaches and rock marks there which look good i don't even know what it is we're going to investigate we'll have a quick look eh? and it turns out i was 0.3 mile away which is what 300 meters and it's a one minute drive <laughs> <laughs> oh well, so it's somewhere here. Right, let's go and have a look. I typed it into the sat nav and it said this is it on the right. And let's go and have a look. Let's go and park this up here. Oh, where am I parked? I'm on the ditch the wrong side of the road. Ooh, wow. Oh, I like the look of this. This beach was absolutely stunning. Lovely sands and a lovely little bay. I really can't waste to come and dangle a line in here. There was also some little bays each side of the beach which also look good for a bite. I really cannot wait to get here and have a go and see if I can catch any fish. Definitely going to be venturing over that way over the next week or two, try a little bit. I have no idea about the mark, I don't know which little bays are the best or anything, but I'm just going to turn up with a bait and give it a go. Right, I'm at the spot I want to fish now, which is just over the other side. So I'm going to have a walk over to the rocks. Um, it's about three and a half hours till I... So I'm going to fish it up and then fish it down for an hour and uh, see what happens. I'll see you when we get over there on them rocks. Adios. So it was time to set off across the field in search of a nice rock to fish off. Seen some beautiful scenery on the way. It was about a 20 minute walk across this field and then I got to the rocks. I started scanning the rocks looking for a safe flat rock that wasn't slippy that would keep me high enough when the eye tide come in so it wouldn't wash me off. Spent about 20 minutes looking, come across this old shingle beach. This was where Mike caught his ray, lovely little beach. This is the old boathouse, lovely building this was, great to see. But anyway, there's my rock. Right, let's get over there to the end of that rock. And that little overhanging ledge, what I just see, looks absolutely perfect to fish off. Happy days.
The time had come to get a bait in the water. I chose a six ounce gripper with a long hook link with a big piece of mackerel on the end, wrapped on tight. This was going to be sent out right into the middle. There is a big tidal pull coming from left to right. So I've left a bend in the line and I've just set the clutch in case someone hits the line or something. So I don't lose my rod. So the line's like hoop round. The grippers are gripping in that way and then the line's hoop round to the rod. So it's all holding. Uh, the bite detection might not be as good. But uh, it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. This one is a very similar setup, just a long running rig. But bite wise on this one, I've just put it on a bit different. Got two hooks on this one, just just because, no reason really, just because I have on mackerel again um, and see how we go. If I start getting snagged and stuff, I might have to change to a pulley. I might even change spots. The water might rise. We're just going to play it by ear, so to say, see if we can make something happen. If you like this kind of stuff, people, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It's all totally free. Let's go. Whoo, it's freezing. Better get that coat back on now. I was sweating a bit after the walk. Now I'm freezing. I hope we're not in two snags. Not a bad place to have your lunch, is it? So while I was snuffling down these ham sandwiches, I was keeping one eye on them rod tips, hoping that something would kick off. And just like in my last video, it kicked off. Wind and rain again. Here comes the wind and rain. <laughs> the rods had been in the water for around 45 minutes. So it was time to have a check on the baits and see what was going on. Well, no snags, no weed, which is good. Something's definitely been pecking at the mackerel though. Maybe crabs, maybe little blennies, maybe little whiting or something. But the good thing is it's been fishing. The hook's sharp and there was a bait in the water. So although they're not biting, I'm not hurled up in a load of snags and weed, which is good. What I'm fishing on, this one again, is just a bit of mackerel on the one hook. I'm just gonna tip it with a little bit of squid head. Just like that, just for a little bit of a uh, little bit of whatever, whatever you want to call it, a little bit of bleh, squid. Right, let's get this back out. So while I was having a staring contest at my rods, and the ferry was having a staring contest with the helicopter, I was starting to wonder: was the fish having a staring contest with my bait? So it was time to check the baits and try and work out exactly what was going on here. Two and a half hours in now without a single nibble. Again, there's little stuff pecking at it, but at least I'm fishing on clean ground for the squid and mackerel. Trying to pick up a ray, but in all honesty, I would take anything. Uh, I'm not fussy today. Not fussy at all. Nice little bit of... I can hardly move, I can't. I've got a vest on, a t-shirt, two oddies, two camo coats. <laughs> feel like I'm walking around like the Michelin man, like this. Still freezing. Oof. There's something really special about staring out to sea. I don't know whether it's the space, the freedom, the unknown, or simply just the peace and quiet. Coming up to high water now, I haven't had a single bite. Not even a peck or nothing. Um, so that tells me there's not much here. There's not even white in pecking at the bait or nothing. There doesn't, it just seems to be a bit of barren water out in front of me. So what I'm gonna do, people, ladies, gentlemen, and anything in between, I'm gonna get packed up. I'm gonna go over to Hollyhead Harbour because I know as the water starts dropping there, it's still deep enough. It's like stupidly deep. Um, I did have a hus from there last time and plenty of action. Uh, I know there's a bit of everything that swims in there, congas, huss, loads of whiting, um, doggies. Um, I'm going to go over there and try and um, see what I can make happen. I've got some bait left. I just feel as if I'm wasting my time here. I've fished the flood for coming up to three hours, changing baits every 20 minutes. And, you know, the baits are having a little bit of stuff pecked out of them probably by crabs, but I'm pulling in enough bait on the hook every time to get a bite. So it's not like it's been stripped and there's no bait out there. With my gear packed away, it was time to wave goodbye to the rock, which had been a brilliant home for the last three hours. I had a look across some more stunning coastline and set off along the coastal path. But I couldn't leave this spot without looking at the old Napoleonic battery, which was an observation post during World War II. Root. 
to Holyhead. Let's go! wind here and a lot of char. So what I might do, fish behind here, out the wind. I've seen lads fishing here before. Just off that bit of grass there. And I can use that as my windbreaker. Just like that, you're out the wind. Fish off that corner there, right? Eh? I think so. <laughs> oh yes. I reversed my car up to the mark to make it a bit more comfortable from me and to keep out the wind but the amount of rubbish here was absolutely disgusting. I had a look around and I had a look through it and yep most of this rubbish was from other anglers. There was rig boxes, bait packages, bits of discarded line. It was disgusting. Clean it up lads. I'll tell you what this rubbish has done my head in. It is so bad. I've got a bin bag here and I'm going to fill a bin bag and take it to the bin and I'm going to try and pick what I can up with the scissors, I ain't touching it I'll just concentrate on all the plastic in case any of it blows in the sea or anything and I'm going to make an effort of fishing this mark over the next few weeks and every time I come here I'll bring a bin bag and take it I reckon there's four bin bags of rubbish here uh, I'm going to clean this up, it's a disgrace and the anglers are leaving it uh, I will bring some gloves or a litter picker but I'm only picking up what I can get with these, I ain't touching nobody's uh, I ain't catching nothing off anything. Don't know what you're gonna find down there, dear. But with them pick it up, bag it, and I'm just gonna drop it at the bin in um uh, by a bin in Ollie Ed or something or in a lay by by the bin. Um it's out of order that is. Well out of order. Just fishing the running rigs again. Right rod, it's just a piece of mackerel. I'm gonna send this out. The left rod will be mackerel and squid, which I'll show you in a minute. The left rod, squid and mackerel. Not casting out too far because you might get boats come round here. It seems extremely deep. It took about 10 or 15 seconds for a six ounce lead to hit the bottom. I'm going to set the clutch on both rods and I'm going to fill a bin bag of rubbish from here because it is absolutely vile. Don't even want a beer. It looks like a it just looks like a tip. I will have this clean within the next few weeks. I'm going to fish here a lot. Right, that clutch is set. Let's get rid of some of this bloody rubbish. Hopefully one goes screaming off. Definitely not uh, touching anything. But of all the plastic bottles, that's the thing that's gonna cause the most harm, the plastic. Well, that's a full bin bag of rubbish, mainly the plastic. It's made a difference already, just taking that, because it was all across here and stuff. I'm gonna go and drop that in the lay-by, by one of the bins in the lay-bys, it'll spot on the way back. Static rods for the last half an hour, so I'm gonna have a look what's going on. There could be anything down there, lobsters, crabs, mermaids, anything. Let's have a look. Not been touched really. Maybe I'd have peck out by some crabs in that bit, but in the scheme of things, it's not really been touched. That one's not been touched either, just turned into a massive tangle. <laughs> oh God. Here we go. Well, I just put on the right rod, just a little two-hook flapper with little bits of mackerel tipped with squid, see if there's anything small down there. But on this rod, I'm gonna send out this full mackerel because we're in deep water and you just don't know, do you? Definitely congers and huss and that around. I'm just gonna send it out. I'm, I'll do things a bit different here. <laughs> send it. Wouldn't that be cool if that full mackerel you just heard, and it just screamed off. It's happened here before in that other video. Um, I'll lead off of one, you can see it on my last one. Full mackerel down the side, just round there. Zzzz. So they're here. Gotta be in it to win it.
<laughs> God, that felt really heavy. It's just deep water. We got a fish. Yes. I'm so happy. It's been hard work today. We've been to Triada. We've been to a different one, Penross. We've been to Hollyhead. We've been cleaning rubbish. We've been sightseeing. But we've got a reward. Yes. Well, nothing's happened in the last hour. I'm going to check the baits now, but um, the tide's dropping now. And I'm starving. Have a look at these baits, see what's going on. Well, that's surprising. That's very surprising. I was expecting this mackerel to be absolutely nailed by crabs and lobsters. It's been in there about an hour, that has. About an hour. I've had that one bite all day. I've been fishing for about six hours now. It's hard and doggy now. Let's see what's on this rod. Nothing has touched the little baits either. That's about an hour's fishing with nothing touching them. I'm, uh, with the tide dropping, I'm gonna wrap it up because I'm a bit hungry. But I've really enjoyed today, to be honest. Um, I like these type of sessions where it's in daylight and I'll go around a few different places. I think they're, I think they'll make a better video for you as well. I do like the nighttime sessions because you get more bites. You, if it was nighttime now, I'd probably have about 20 dogs, about 30 white in, a strap conger, a couple of us. It happens at night, the night tides are always better, but you don't really see a lot in the videos, do you? Let me know what you think anyway. But uh, I'm gonna get this bag of rubbish and drop it off by a bin. Put your rubbish in the bin. Right, see you all in the next one. Like, subscribe, comment. See you in a bit. Put your rubbish in the bin.